Hey everybody, it's Greg here, owner of Dice Jar Games, and today we're bringing you a spoiler talk video. So, with me today we have got Daniel Real. Hey guys, thanks for having me. And Mr. Nick Spence. Hey guys, I'm here as well. Awesome. Um, so, first thing we are going to be covering is Shadow Brute. So, the hero for Shadow Brute is uh, Levia, Shadowborn Abomination. The adult hero has got 40 health, and the young hero has got 20 health. Intellect is 4, and the effect reads, If a card with 6 or more attack has been put into your banished zone this turn, cards you own lose blood debt during the end phase. What do you guys think? Yeah, so this, um, this hero is really neat, because it's, um, it's like an evolution of the brute that we've already seen in the game. So, Reinar, the previous brute that we had, um, was all about discarding 6 power um, or more cards to intimidate your opponent. Yeah. This this one's about banishing. Yeah, so with her banishing effect of banishing six or more, instead of dominating, it actually removes the blood debt from the end of the phase that you take from leaving your cards. Yeah, in yeah. Cards. So the the blood debt deals, uh, the blood debt is on attack actions and action cards. Yeah. And uh, when they're in your banish zone, they they deal damage to you at the end of the turn. At, yeah, at the end of your turn. So when you banish a six or more attack with it, you don't take that damage. At the end of the turn. Which is really good because without seeing her hero card, we saw a couple other um of her cards beforehand. Yeah, and yeah. it was looking very like trading life. To yeah, yeah. Play, we're thinking, started... gosh, you're gonna be taking five damage a turn yeah. from this towards the end game and a lot of decks could just block that out. Yes. Um and and, and stop the damage. Um and then you just die to your own cards, which would yeah. be a big problem. Yeah, it would be a huge problem. Um, Three turns in and you're already game yeah. over from your own, yeah. own effects. Not but, good. But with this, you can, you um, a lot of those blood deck cards have yeah. abilities that trigger from the banner zone that you play them. Yeah. So you get the full advantage of those blood deck cards without the punishing downside. Yeah. Basically. So this card is really cool. And we'll yes. Have a look at some of the other. She cards. Did beautiful artwork as well. They did very well on the yeah. artwork. Yeah. yeah. Right. It looks amazing. I think. Yeah. Alrighty. Moving on, our first card is Dread Screamer. So this is a... I believe this comes in more than... I think this is coming in red, yeah, blue, so and it's yellow. Red, red, yellow, and blue. blue. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it reads, as an additional cost to play Dread Screamer, banish three random cards from your graveyard. If a card with six or more attack is banished this way, Dread Screamer gains go again, and it has blood debt. At the beginning of your end phase, if Dread Screamer is in your banished zone, you lose one health. This has got six attack and it blocks for three with a cost of two. So this is a we're going to be like a perfect example of what Levia wants. Yes. So you're banishing cards to to get your six attacks out of there. Yeah. It's pushing through a lot of damage. Um, it can give it can get go again. So you can go this and then attack with her weapon. Yes. Um, which will be coming up and it also is blood debt. So this this card I think is great because it does everything. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's a double stack on the the six or more banish. It's banishing to the graveyard uh, from the yeah. graveyard, which is interesting. Um, the randomness of the graveyard is actually interesting, which changes yeah. the way our equipment slots go. They all actually go to the graveyard now instead of yeah. instead of um, leaving them where they are in their slabs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you got to make sure your equipment do go to the graveyard because they actually take part. In the in the random banish. Yes. So, if uh, you block with your equipment too early, and they go to the graveyard, and then you have to banish them, that can tilt the, these effects out of your favor. Yeah. So another reason why you have to be careful with um, with your equipment. Yes. Although, having said that, a lot of the more expensive uh, legendary equipment are battle worn, and they don't yes. actually do go to the graveyard. Yeah, they don't actually go to the graveyard at all. Yeah. But yeah. Could Stuff get, like tunic. Yeah, could get mangled. You call for a tunic <laughs> no more. Someone yeah. mangles it, mangles your uh, your uh, uh, scab skins, and then, and then um, you banish them. That would be whoopsie. <laughs> yep. Oh well. Let's move on to the next yeah, one. Yeah, sure thing. Alrighty. So we have got convulsions from the bellows of hell, which is a shadow brute action. It's red with a cost of two, and its effect reads as an additional cost to play convulsions from the bellows of hell. Banish three random cards from your graveyard. If a card with six or more attack is banished this way, the next attack action card you play this turn gains plus three and dominate. Go yeah. again. So, I'm going to say it again. Convulsions from the Bellows of Hell. 
What a name. Honestly, Gosh. what a name. Look at the artwork. It's just bloody everywhere. It's, it's, it's got crazy. a metal on so many levels. It dominates your opponent. It looks yep. badass. It sounds badass. And it blocks three. <laughs> yep. It is also following the same order of banishing three random cards from your graveyard. Yeah. Um, so we, we can see how important those six plus attacks are going to be to this yes. deck. Yes. So you're going to have to run uh, a lot. A lot of six plus attacks. Yeah, so you're not going to get exactly. away. Exactly. Um, and the actual effect of this card. Yeah. So the actual effect of plus three and dominate. You imagine doing this, banishing a six plus, and then doing the Dread Screamer yeah, that we yeah. just saw before. It's just coming at you for nine with dominate. Okay, oh yeah. And yeah. you're not paying blood dead at the end of the turn. Yeah. And 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 CNC is a. Is a, is a real card. Yes, CNC you know, is awesome. Um, and yeah. you can still play brute cards in this deck. So you can you can savage yeah. swing. You can pack hunt for um, intimidate, dominate nine. Yeah. You can push through some mega damage with the bellows of hell. <laughs> yep. All right, should we go to the next one? All righty, guys. So the next card we've got here is Shadows of Plasma Fit. Shadows of Plasma Fit is a shadow brute action attack. And it's red with a cost of two. Um, it's got an attack of six, and its effect reads: draw a card, then discard a random card. If a card with six or more health is discarded this way, search your deck for a card with blood debt, banish it, then shuffle your deck. And this also has blood debt. At the beginning of your end phase, if Shadow of Plasma Fit is in your banished zone, you lose one health. So straight off the bat, we see another. Another blood deer on here is static. Uh, standard six attack, which is typical. But here's interesting. It's an attack action, or action attack, sorry. Mm -hmm. That's a correct statement. It's actually around the other way. But it also mm -hmm. has no defense. So it's yeah. kind of hard to defend, so... so... Yeah, this is the first of a number of cards that we've seen out of this set that are attack actions that do not defend. Defend, yes. Um, and this is to balance out their, um, their aggressive sort of nature. Play, yeah. Um, Another really interesting part of this card is the, uh, and we see it on a few of these Shadow Brute cards, is uh, the draw card and then discard a random card. Yes. So this this feeds into the the randomness that is present in all of the Brute decks so far in the game. Yeah. And or Ordinary Reinar works quite a lot like a combo deck. So you have your grip of four cards, and you try and mould it through your opponent's turn to reduce the randomness. So if you have to discard a random card, you want to discard a random card random card with six or more, you block with the ones you don't want to discard or you play them first. Yeah. With this, you draw a card and then discard it. A, yes. diff, a, diff, a random card. So you have so, actually no way without opting. Yeah, so of if, you can't, uh, if you can't control what's on top of your deck, you're going to be playing the dice. Yeah. So this means it's going to be really crucial that a majority of your deck is going to be six plus yes. attacks. Yes. Or you play an eye and, and, and opt the top cards. <laughs> Or draw yeah. the eye and then discard it and then yeah, feels yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the two. Uh, right. and, and, yeah, anyway. Um, and this this card is great because it has a combo with another card, um, uh, Rooted Evil, which we'll see in a minute. Yeah. All right, let's move to the next one. All righty. So next card on display is Hexagore, the Death Hydra. So this is a Shadow Brute weapon. Um, that says Flail. Uh, so I guess that must be what type of weapon it is. And mm -hmm. It's a two-handed weapon. Um, and it reads, once per turn action, cost to attack. Whenever you attack with Hexagore, it deals damage to you equal to six, minus the number of cards with blood debt in your banished zone. Now, this, this card I love, because um, uh, Bravo is one of my favorite heroes, and we know from playing Bravo how powerful attacking for six is, and this one can do it for one resource less cost. But there's a really big downside on this card, and it's whenever you attack, you take damage equal to six minus the number of cards with blood debt. So if it's early in the game and you're forced to attack you with your weapon and you don't have your blood debt stacked yet, you're going to take a bunch damage. of damage. Yep. And the other issue is that this card doesn't have go again, and not a lot of brute cards do have go again. So if you fail to banish a card with six power or more before attacking with your weapon, if you're just attacking with your weapon then you're going to take the damage from the blood debt at the end of your turn anyway. Yeah. So it's six either way you're looking at it. Yes, so probably imagine this is more of a late game strategy of yeah. using it. Uh, it's not really something you would see in early game play. Mm. Um, interesting weapon, like uh, a takenly 
difference on the actual normal flower yeah, itself yeah. with chains instead of instead of a club. Yeah. Yeah, so you can't pummel loss because yes. it's not a it's not a club or a hammer. Yeah. But yeah, it's a, a really interesting card and um I think you can see play with a bit more go again in the deck. Yes. Um whether that is how it is on release or later on, we'll have to see. Alrighty, so we'll move on to our final card from the Shadow Brute that we'll be uh, talking about today, which is Deep Rooted Evil. <coughs> so this card is a majestic and it's yellow with a cost of three and attack of six. And it reads, if a card with six or more attack has been put into your banished zone this turn, you may play Deep Rooted Evil from your banished zone. It also has Blood Dead. So this card is like super value, like... um. So you can actually go and get it and put it in your banished zone with uh, uh, Shadow of, a, of Blasphemet. Yep. Um, so you can have it set up there. And you th- might think, well, an attack for six from the banished zone is um, a bit hard to set up. But Brute is all about those big combo turns. You have um, set up with Blood Rush Bellow. It's actually coming yes. in for eight. Your opponent's been intimidated maybe a couple times with barraging beat down or something. This uh, six can really put you over the top. Yes, and Blood Rush Balance is is viable in this deck actually, yes, as, yeah. as it is just a brute card and not a specialization one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the, as we know from Reinar, the card is insanely strong. Yes. Um, yeah, another six plus attack. It's going to go in the deck, hundred percent. Alrighty guys, so now we will move on to our standard brute cards. So these are brute cards that are not shadow brute cards. Um, at the moment, the only ones we have got to talk about are Pulpin. Um, so yeah, we'll start with Pulpin. Alright, so interestingly, Reinar's also going to get a few more toys to play with. Yes. Um, and this one is another one of those really exciting cards because it has no block, which means that it's really aggressive, uh, which is what we like to see. Um, so... It lets you draw a card, discard a random card. If a card was six or more, it gains dominate. And if it's defended in less than two non-equipments, it has go again. Yes, which is the go again that we actually need, that this deck needs, outside of scab skins and the other yeah, yeah. other pieces of equipment. Uh, this actually provides the go again as well, or forces two cards out of your opponent's hand, which is yeah. I mean, we've seen very nice. Uh, barraging Big Horn from Crucible of War. Which is a very similar card. Yes. Um, that card can block for three, but um, doesn't have dominate. It doesn't. It has the same go again ability, but th- sorry, not yeah, it doesn't have the go- dominate. Um, so this so is just a more aggressive. This is just a of... more aggressive version of that, and it yeah. makes it harder for your opponent to deny the go again. Yeah. They need to have the defense reaction and arsenal. So this card is just fantastic. Yeah. All right. So we'll move on now to the other brute card that we've got, which is Tear Limb from Limb. Tear Limb from Lynn is a blue majestic with a cost of two, and it's a brute action card that reads, draw a card, then discard a random card. If a card with six or more attack is discarded this way, the next brute at attack action card you play this turn gains plus X, where X is its base. Go again. All right, so this is a great setup card, but this isn't probably isn't the great card for the other cards that have the draw a card and discard a card because you do not want to see this being drawn and discarded. I don't see it seeing much play in Levia specifically because it doesn't hit that. It's not a six attack. And um, I don't really think it's an effect that that deck's going to be won. I think it's an all right resource card for the deck as well as if you've got multiple in hand, you might as well try and use it. One one of the things with Rhino though is it does, um, it has a few good blues but not, a huge amount and yeah. this kind of gives you an alternative to sand sketch plan if you, um for your like action spot yeah but yeah this is another one of those brute cards with no block so yes no block no attack it, it's very interesting. yeah it puts it yeah an interesting spot as a blue card because typically you want them to be fairly defensive so that if you draw too many you can get yeah. rid of some yeah but i guess if you draw too many blues with this you're just going to play it anyway for the damage yeah so Alright, so moving on, we are now moving on to the Shadow Runeblade class. Uh, we have got Hero here, which is Chain, bound by Shadow. Uh, the adult hero has got 40 health, and the young hero has got 20, and its intellect is 4. The effect reads, once per turn action, create a, sh- a soul shackle token. Your next Runeblade or Shadow action this turn gains go again, and it has go again. 
Um, the Soul Shackle token is a Shadow Rune Blade Aura with at the beginning of your action phase, banish the top card of your deck. Mm-hmm. Alright, so already we're off to a start. Right, we got yeah. Soul Shackle. We don't know what that does, but it does say at the bottom what it does. It banishes the top card <laughs> of your deck. Yeah. So banishing the top card of your deck, that sounds interesting. You don't really want to like make too many. a very shadowy thing to do. Yeah. You know? I mean, hopefully there is a way to get rid of this token and it's not just sitting there because if it just stays there that's a lot of cards off the top of your deck yep. gone i mean what a powerful effect it is though but you can yes. uh, give any rune blade or shadow action go again there yeah. are a few really good rune blade and uh shadow actions yes. that do not have go again i.e mm-hmm. read the ruins read. Yeah, read read the ruins read just give it's it go great, again man. play read the ruins read play another read the ruins read it's great in your turn yeah it's just Six tokens and uh, yeah. well, six chants, and also, you're off to a good start. Yeah, I think uh, I think old mate Viscera is yeah. blushing. <laughs> On top of this, banish on the top of the deck would suggest that uh, we have uh, a fix that we can play from the yeah, banish yeah, zone yeah, again. Yeah, I mean, this works well with our blood deck cards that are up and coming. I just got to say quickly that the art is amazing. Yes, this, these uh, these new heroes are really knocking it out of the park. Yep, just yeah, stunning. All right. Alrighty, well we'll move it on. So we've seen the hero and the soul shackle token now. So Dimensional Crossroads is a uh, shadow rune blade action aura, which is a majestic in the set. Um, it's got a block three. It's a yellow card and it's got a cost of two. Its effect reads: Go again, and whenever you play an action card or n- or a non-attack action card from the banished zone, if you haven't played another card of that type this turn. Deal one arcane damage to target hero. If you lose health during your turn, destroy Dimension or Crossroads. Damages damage causes loss of health. Yeah, so um, this card is really cool. It does up to two da- arcane damage, like extra every single turn, for as long as you can keep it around. Um, and this really en- encourages you to play out your blood deck cards yes. from the banish zone. Get them all out of there. Play them all give them go again with Chain's ability and just keep it going. Um, and now what's interesting is that you can run three of these in your deck. So if you can get multiple Diamond XL crossroads out, you can deal up to nine additional damage. Um, sorry, six six additional damage yeah. every single turn from playing a non-attack yes. and attack action. The problem is, is uh, so like it says if you lose damage, it doesn't mean... this. I think the reason right, they write damage causes loss of health is... So that you can't sigil and say, well, technically I'm not really taking yeah, damage. Yeah, yeah. So what what it means is, um, so if you lose life during your turn, so the things that can currently do this, the big one is the blood debts, mm-hmm. right? But also if you attack with your weapon, you get shunted. That yes. kills it. Or if you get uh, Savage Swings. Yes, correct. Um, because both of those cards can cause you to take damage in your own turn um, and would destroy the next to your crossroads. Yeah, So correct. yeah, this is kind of... I think it really shows you what you want to do with this class, is you want to be comboing cards out of your banish zone and really be aggressive, yep. get lots of damage through. Alrighty, so we'll move on from there to Shadow of Ursur. So Shadow of Ursur is a majestic, it's a Shadow Rune Blade <coughs> action attack. It's blue with a cost of zero and has two attack and three block. Its effect reads, you may play Shadow of Ursur from your banished zone. As an additional cost to play Shadow of Ursa, you may banish a card with Blood Debt from your hand. If you do, Shadow of Ursa gains Go Again and blood, has Blood Debt. Yes, yeah, so this is a, a long line of uh, Shadow and Shadow Runeblade cards that have the ability to be played from your Banish Zone again. Yes. So this gives you great per card value. Um, and boy, what a card this is. Blue, block three, attacks for two with Go Again. It's going to go in every every shadow room blade ever yes that card's just amazing and you can fuel your banner zone with additional cards that you can banish from your hand yeah. the problem is is banishing those blood deck cards makes the crossword card we makes just saw beforehand go again die yeah so you want to uh, maybe banish the card from your hand give it go again and then play the banish card immediately Yes, so um, that you're not left at the end of the turn losing your crossroads as well exactly as two life. Right. I th- yeah, I think this deck wants to go fast, eh? Yes. Just get it, get get it, it all out, going. Yeah. All right, we'll go to the next one. 
Alrighty, so moving on from Shadow of Ursa, we have got Invert Existence. So this is a Shadow Rune Blade instant. It's blue with a cost of one, and its effect reads: You may play Invert Existence from your banished zone. Banish up to two cards in an opposing hero's graveyard. If an attack action and a non-attack action card are banished this way, deal two arcane damage to that hero, and it has blood dead. So already we see a card that goes well with the last card. So if this is in your hand and you attack with the Ursa and banish this with yep. its effect and give it go again, this is a card that you can get out of there instantly. Yeah, yeah. I, this, this card is really cool because it has so many different uses. So it's currently one of the um, one of the only forms of uh, graveyard hate in the game. Yes. So if your opponent is trying to interact with the gra- graveyard, say for example they're another Shadow Rune Blade, or they're going to remember, yeah, like a Shadow Brute, or they're playing Remembrance, or they're trying to put cards on the top or bottom of their library with some of the generics from the set. You can banish them uh, as an instant, right? And also, not only does it do that, it also can deal two arcane damage. Yes. Which is a, um, it's like a breakpoint number. You know, we're used to blocking one against Runeblade, but blocking two against Runeblade is a bit different. You're going to have to either sacrifice more equipment or accept that you're going to take some arcane damage, which yep. can feed into the, some of the attacks from Crucible. So, um, oh gosh, meet and greet, and do you remember the other one? There's another attack. Consuming Volition. Yeah, Consuming Volition, that's it. Um, the Making your opponent discard a card if they hit. Uh, so this can really push through that arcane damage um, at a surprise. Like your opponent blocks it out thinking there's no arcane damage coming. You just shock them with the invert existence. Yes, correct. Yeah, and just make them discard. So a really, really cool effect. Um, it's one of my favorite cards from the set, to be honest. I believe you can chain it to the Remembrance as well. So if your opponent plays Remembrance, I believe that uh, you get priority the second it's played and you're allowed to chain your invert existence to it and... Mm. pre-banish some of, the, some of the cards that they may be wanting yeah. to put back into can, their do deck. They, do you get to um, fizzle? Like, so do they get to pick the banished targets and then you can play this? No, so I think, I think on playing you can change. Okay. But once they pick, I think you've missed your opportunity to change. Yeah. Which is still great because most, most uh, remembrances most... are going for specific cards anyway. Yeah, and you should yeah. know what you should be picking. Yeah, in those if it's Warrior, options. you pick the Red Warriors, Valors. Against some decks, you take the CNC's E Strikes. Yeah. Um, you know, the big attacks for Rune Blade. So, yeah, that's correct. Yeah. It's just awesome. Really cool card to see in the game. Unique effect. Yep. Alrighty, so we will move on to Dimensional Gateway. So this is a Shadow Rune Blade action, with, it blocks for two, and it is red with a cost of one. Um, so it says opt three, so <coughs> look at the top three cards of your deck, you may put them in top and or bottom in any order. Reveal the top card of your deck, if it's a Rune Blade card, deal one arcane damage to each opposing hero, if it's a shadow card, you may banish it and go again. So this card's really cool, because your hero is going to be generating these tokens to banishing the top card of your deck. So with this card, you can set up your draws, so that yes. you keep the cards that you want, and unless, most of the time you're going to have a Runeblade Shadow card somewhere in the top three cards. So it should be dealing a damage as well. Yes, which means you get to pick which card is going to get banished the next turn, which is great. Yeah, yeah. Um, on top of that, um, you need to choose to do damage. Yeah. Um, most likely the shadow card that you are banishing is one that you can play straight away. Yeah. So you know you're putting it there to play. Yeah. And some of the room blade cards trigger off um, non-attack actions being played before them. Yeah. So not we don't have Viscerize ability in shadow, but there are some other cards. Um, and they key off this. And this kind of puts, uh, uh, gosh, the zero cost opt from Arcane so Rising. The interesting thing is, does it, does it do both effects off a Shadow Runeblade card? Yes. Or is it keyworded to only So, yeah, if it's a Runeblade card, deal one damage, and if it's a Shadow card. So they're two separate effects, and they both trigger. So one damage and banish. So everything you want. Yeah. So, so you, yeah, you really... want to reveal a Shadow Runeblade and... Yeah, do really sweet card. the price of one. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so we will move on now f- to Bounding Demigon. So Bounding Demigon is a Shadow Runeblade action attack. 
Um, this the version we're showing on screen right now is red, but I believe it comes in mm -hmm. yellow and blue. Correct. And it's got three attack and it blocks for three. And its effect reads, if you have played a non-attack action card this turn, you may play Bounding Demigon from your banished zone. If you do, it gains plus one attack. So, off the creating, using your hero's ability and uh, creating go again on that last card, and then you play it, up three, and this is in your top three, this yeah. is one of those cards where you want to reveal it, banish it off the deck, do a damage, and then you can play it from the arsenal because you'll still have yeah, an action exactly. point. Like, Dimensional shield crossroads, up three, deal of damage, and then just come in for four off a single card. Yeah. You know? um, this card is like one of the really obvious payoffs to your yep. uh, banishing malarkey. Yes. You know, just coming in for four, um, coming in for four just at the end of anything is a strong stat line that's been in the game for yes. forever since um, Snatch and Scarf Scar have been a thing. You know. So yeah, this card is really great. Alrighty, so we'll move on from Bounding Demigon to Seeds of Agony. So Seeds of Agony is a Shadow Rune Blade action. Blocks for two, and it's yellow with a cost of zero. Um, it's, and the effect reads, you may play Seeds of Agony from your banished zone. The next attack action with cost one or less, you play this turn, gains deal one arcane damage to target hero. It has go again, and blood debt. Okay. All right, so straight off the bat, this is, actually has three colors. Yeah. Um, for the red, it's uh, two or less. Yellow, it's one or less. And for the blue, I imagine it's yeah, zero. Zero, zero or less. Um, yeah, so deal an extra arcane damage to target hero. That's um, a really strong effect because the idea behind this card is that you can play it multiple times. Yes. And that you're going to continually play it over the course of the game. You can discard it, you can banish it. Um, and you're just going to keep stacking up those extra pings. Yeah. I think over the course of the game, this can deal a lot of damage. Yeah. And because it's zero cost, you can get it out of your banished zone just like that. This is a card you definitely want to be playing. The basically the maximum amount you can. Yeah. I mean, this card has so much value. You can just play it every turn that's available. Yeah. You know, like, um, yeah, the Spanish ability is so strong. It's like starting with six, seven cards in your hand. You know, every single turn you mill three or four cards, you get three or four cards extra. You'd just be so aggressive. does mean you're probably playing a high account in your deck because you are worried about decking out. Yeah, yeah, true. But hopefully you finish the game before then. Yeah, I think that's the idea as you're trying to race your opponent down. All right. All righty, and then we'll move on to our last of the Shadow Rune Blade cards, and that is Galaxy Black. So Galaxy Black is a two-handed Shadow Rune Blade weapon, which is a sword, and its effect reads, once per turn action, cost one attack. If you have played a card from your banished zone this turn, Galaxy Black gains plus two until the end of the turn. If Galaxy Black hits a hero, deal one arcane damage to that hero. Yeah, this card is amazing for an aggressive deck, because you're going to be playing cards, you're going to be playing cards from your banished zone, Hopefully you can have go again through his ability. Yep. Then you're going to come in for three, and you're going to be wanting a card to hold um, to block because you don't want to be taking four from your opponent's weapon every turn. Yes, yep. it's just a lot of damage for one cost. You know, no, yep. no other weapon does that much damage for a single resource. No, for game. a single resource, no. Yeah, like when you compare this Kadachi, you know, with you know, I mean, Kadachi is two weapons, and you can get two hits. I mean, technically, but... you can fire a pistol for five, but that requires preset up, which requires yeah, yeah, a lot. This is just one. But... Like, if it's not blocked, one for four. Yeah, like that's just value. So much value. Um, yes, correct. I think it's going to be a really important part of this deck. Yeah. All right. All righty. So we'll switch it up and head over to the normal Rune Blade cards now. So we are only displaying uh, two of the normal uh, Rune Blade cards here, and the first one is. Vexting Malice, and Vexting Malice reads, deal, oh, it's a rune blade action attack, um, it's red with one cost, with three attack and three defense, and it reads, deal two arcane damage to target hero. So, we got three colors of these again, um, varying only in an attack, not actual damage, so the mm. arcane damage is two, so the, and yeah, it the, remains two. Yeah, the, the, blue, the blue still deals two damage, um, so... I actually think the blue is like super strong. Yes, blue is, would be a super playable resource, block three, tanks for one, as well as doing two arcane yeah. damage. So yeah, for a lot of a lot of cards in this game, the reds are like four or, yes. or five. They require 
two cards to block. This red only requires one card to block the physical damage anyway. So the blue is not actually that much worse unless they just... Um, it's probably going to leak more because I'll so just choose to take it. It's a card that like forces a two card block to fully block. Yeah, yeah. Because it's two different outsorts yeah. of damage. And, and again, it it's hits that two arcane damage breakpoint for Rune Blade to try and push some of those other... If you've dealt arcane damage, this turn effects yes. through. So... This card is going to be really useful for Runeblade going forward. It's going to see lots of play in Viscerai. Yeah. Alrighty, so the next and last Runeblade card uh, we have decided to talk about is Dread Scythe. So Dread Scythe is a Runeblade weapon, which is a scythe and it's two-handed. It attacks for three and its effect reads, Once per turn, action. Three cost, attack. Whenever you attack with Dread Scythe, deal one arcane damage to the defending hero. A hero dealt damage by Dread Scythe can't gain health during their next action phase. Alright, so already we are seeing a very cost heavy weapon. Yeah. Either requiring one blue or multiple other cards from your hand. Mm-hmm. Um, when it swings, it's uh, swinging for four, but on two damage fronts. Yeah, yeah. So when I originally saw this weapon, I didn't get it. Yeah. Uh, so, um, the cr- weapon release with Crucible is also is a one cost weapon that attacks for three. Yeah. Um, and with the galaxy. Um, yeah, and similar story with the Galaxy Black, right? Um, you can pay two and use your grasp of the Arknight to create the one arcane, um, one rune chant that does the one damage that this would make. So. Yeah. So obviously it's not much too different. Um, it does have an effect that your hero can't gain health during the next action phase. At this moment, um, well, it's sort of possible. Yeah. Uh, instant speed anyway. Yeah. Outside but, of blessing of deliverance. Yeah, we have to just wait and see, see some of the light cards. Maybe there's a bunch of life gain in there. You know, yeah, that um, we haven't seen. Yeah. The the warrior, one of the warrior majestics, can gain life when he rushes. Yeah. So, it can help with that, but. At the moment, the life gain from this passive seems a bit worse. So I think yeah. this this is a card for the future. Yes. In which there might be a cleric or something that does a lot of life gain on its turn. Correct. Yeah. Looks very nice. Cool. Yeah, Adam is amazing. All right, so we'll move on to the shadow class of cards now. So starting us off, we have got a legendary card, which is Carrion Husk. It's a shadow equipment, and it's a chess piece that blocks for a whopping six. Its effect reads, if you defend with Carrion Husk, banish it when the combat chain closes. At the start of your turn, if you have 13 or less health, banish Carrion Husk, and it has Blood Death. So this is a card that you want to get out early game and not late game, because by the time it gets to late game, you just lost it, because it's been banished. Yeah, well, let me just, just say how, but, how ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous sex block is. It is crazy. Like, I, I like you can fridge hard with this. Like, yeah, like this is this is wearing a fridge for your fridge. Yeah. Um, like uh, I like to play Bravo, and there's a card called Spinal Crush. Right, uh, dominate. Come in for nine. If it does four or more damage, you can stop. Go again, which is going to be really strong against Chain because yeah. that he's all about go again. He can stop that card just by putting this in front. Yeah. Nothing else, and Nothing he can else. just keep going. This yep. is ridiculous for aggressive decks. Yep. It lets them just ignore your opponent for a turn. This is also the first legendary equipment scene, and it is the third legendary for the, the shadow side, so... Yeah, yeah. So we haven't haven't seen, the light one. seen any of the light legendaries. Yeah. But yeah, this this card is amazing. Looks amazing. This is going to be really cool. Super cool design. Super cool design. It's, um, you have to play this weird game where you don't want to drop too low to the point where you lose it. Like, if you get Darchy Darchy, you're thinking, oh, God, I don't want to drop. If he raises the Darchy, I drop below 13 and lose it. Yeah, so uh, if you lose this for the health effect, you're just going to feel like you've wasted yeah. a card in your deck. Yeah, exactly. Do you two seeing this being a staple in Shadow Dex? Oh, it'll oh, be in every single one. Uh, yes, very <laughs> much so. Six block is insane. Yeah. Like, um, at the very least, we'll say see play. If you can buy one, you'll play it. Yeah. Unlimited is just around the corner. I'm sure yeah. people will be able to buy one at some point. Yeah, yeah. Alrighty, so we'll move on from Carrion Husk now on to our second legendary from the Shadow kind of thing. Um, and that is Doomsday, which is a Shadow instant. 
and it reads legendary levia specialization you may only have one doomsday in your deck and only if your hero is levia play doomsday only if there are six or more cards with blood debt in your banished zone create a plasma fit the soul harvester token so interesting um this is a outside of gorgonian tome this was like the first um legendary specialization to go in a deck that we've seen so this um this these were some of the first cards that we saw from monarch and when i first saw them there was there was only questions so many questions so many questions what the what is what is a blasphemy what is this all this token what is what what is a blood debt these are multiple instances why is either eyes gone up fifty dollars <laughs> yes, exactly. um so many questions but um yeah this card is really interesting because with levia you're looking to banish six plus attacks and a lot of them already have blood debt yep. so do you think this would be easy to achieve but there's a lot of random draw discard effects and if you happen to be unlucky and discard your doomsday there's not currently a way to get instance back so if i think I think we'll find that early game this is a pitch card and late game when you yeah. actually have all that stuff there this would be a play card yeah you might want to try and uh, track where it is in your deck roughly remember how many turn cycles it'll be till it comes yeah. up so that you don't risk the draw discard and throw away your powerful ritual exactly yeah. we'll get to the tokens in just a minute but they're really cool as well yeah yeah so uh moving on to the plasma fit the soul harvester token um we have got yeah plasma fit the soul harvester it's a shadow token it uh, it states demon alley it's got six attack and six defense and it reads allies can be attacked and can't be defended with defense they are destroyed when they have taken damage equal to their health at the end of the turn heal all damage dealt to plasma fit once per turn action zero cost attack whenever plasma fit attacks you may banish a shadow card from your hand if you do, you may banish a card from the defending hero's soul. So, straight off the bat, um, with the last couple of words you said, this reads as uh, a hate light class card. Not a hate mm. other shadow cards, uh, shadow classes. Well, just it does that as well, but I think it's good enough to, yeah. to see play in all your decks for a one card. You know, you only have to play the Doomsday. Um, Another it, interesting, this is our this is our first like minion sort of thing. Yeah, this is a is cool. brand new card type, so we've never seen a, an ally before. Yes. Uh, so we get to start with a, a demon ally, um, and we can see it's like a, a mini hero. It's got the attack and defense stat, the attack and health stat, like yep. any other hero would. And they can, no be, they can be targeted by your opponent, so um, your opponent can attack your hero. Or... Or the, uh, the ally. Yeah, so the, the way this reads to me is that you're going to try and get this off with some kind of action point so that you can attack them for six on the turn that you play it. Correct. Um, and so you're going to come at them for six, and then on their turn they're going to kill it because they don't want you coming in for six for free every single turn. Yeah. So the way I see it, see it is attack for six, gain six health. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, it basically here means you're probably not taking damage your next turn, not unless they have go again. Yeah. Which we'll talk about another card that's going to give that problem Yeah. a solution shortly. Um, so another interesting thing is you can't actually defend it with any defense. Yeah. So unless there's some sort of card which will um, provide something for it yeah. that makes it bit bigger or yeah. whether that's it. Plasma likes to get hit. <laughs> Plasma Fit is getting hit most yeah. likely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, only briefly in this world. All right. All right, so next up we have got uh, Eclipse. Eclipse is a legendary shadow instant. Its effect reads... Oh, it's blue and it's got zero cost. Its effect reads, legendary chain specialization. You may only have one Eclipse in your deck and only if your hero is chain. Play Eclipse only if you have played six or more cards with blood debt this turn. If you have, you may play Eclipse from your Banished Zone. Create an Ursa the Soul Reaper token. Alright. So, this card seems harder to get off. Um, because you have to play six cards from your ban- um, six cards with Blood Debt in a single turn. But, you don't have to worry so much. Because this card is the... the it doesn't have Blood Debt. So it doesn't no. do any damage to you itself. And you can play it from your banish zone. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about it. You can banish it. 
um, with either your tokens or another card that say banish a card from your hand, then you can just leave it until the time is right. Whether the, the levier one can actually be messed up. You can discard the card by yes. accident. Yeah. Um, which you can't really do with this one. Um, so yeah, I think those are the main differences. I think the art for this is... It's insane. A planet... Well, planet, like planet of bones. Bones covering the sun. Yeah. It's incredible. This just gives me like berserk vibes yeah you know it's just so it really cool ursa the soul reaper token which yeah. is i believe the next one yep yep you've got it right on the <laughs> nail there nick um, so moving on we've got ursa the soul reaper it reads well ursa the soul reaper six attack and six health um, allies can be attacked and can't be defended with defense or block they are destroyed when they have taken damage equal to their health. At the end of turn, heal all damage dealt to Ursa. Once per turn, action, zero cost, attack. Mm -hmm. While Ursa is attacking a hero with one or more cards in their soul, the attack has go again. So once again, this card speaks to his, uh, his innate ability um, of wanting to go really wide and playing multiple cards a turn. Um... It does scream again, light hate, because you're only mm. really going to get its effect off from hate. And it does basically exactly the same as the other token, with it being a free attack for yeah, six. attack for six. And an heal extra, six life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, this, I, I think this card actually works better in chain as well, because the deck's going to be really aggressive. Which I think the, the Shadow Brute's going to be more of a mid-range strategy, or a set-up deck. But this deck is going balls to the walls, and an extra attack for six, an extra six health, is really going to tip the game really heavily in your favor. Especially seeing as you've had to have played six cards beforehand, Correct. so you're already probably having a massive turn. And just it's probably it probably means turn, right? the turn before you've taken a lot of damage yeah, to yeah. pull this off. Yeah, and it just lets you kind of reset the tempo back in your favor yeah. and finish the game. Yeah, yeah. So the, these cards are, look amazing too. We've seen them in cold foil. With the Rune Blade border, yes. and they just look incredible. Incredible! Like, Can't wait to get one of my hands. Well, on well, I think they're going to be an expensive acquisition, but yeah, I think they're going to be really cool. Yeah. Alrighty, so moving on, we have got Tome of Torrent. So Tome of Torrent is a majestic rare. Um, it's a shadow action that is red and has zero cost, and it reads, "You may play Tome of Torment from your Banish Zone. Draw a card." And it has blood debt. So this is a card. So if this is in your banish zone and you've had to block out a turn, this is a, just a free draw one, and then get to put a card at arsenal yeah. and hold off for a turn if you need to. Yeah, this this card is like um yeah good for that, but it's also kind of made for chain because you can give it to go again. So you, you can you can give it go again, play the tome of torment, draw a card up, and then maybe be able to do something with other cards from your banish zone. So. You could, if, even if you have zero cards in hand, you, you can block all out. You can give your next shadow action go again with Chain's ability, play it, draw a card, pitch it, and then play other cards from your Banish Zone. So you can try and get back into the game that way if you fall behind. On um, top of that, you can turn a four-card starting hand to a five-card starting yeah, hand and with if you, uh, no resource and no, no action point lost. Yeah, and... Um, if you're looking to play six cards a turn, maybe there's a setup deck with uh, other tomes and time snap potions where you're looking to draw seven cards to play six of them in Correct. a turn, you know? So, yeah, this card is really exciting. Yep. Alrighty, moving on, we have got Shadow Puppetry. So, Shadow Puppetry is a majestic shadow action that blocks for two. It is red and is costs zero to use. And the effect reads, the next attack action card you play this turn gains plus one, go again. And if this attack hits, look at the top card of your deck, you may banish it. And it has go again. Now, um, you might Can I just thinking, say wow? Yeah, like, just, you might, just you, wow. people listening might be thinking, huh? Because, um, yeah, what you heard is correct. This, this card is broken. <laughs> this, this is probably such, one of the best cards I've I seen so I think far. it's... The, yeah, one of the one of the strongest cards. It's got a lot of applications. Let me let me just paint a picture for you. You know, you got CNC in hand, you've got this in hand, and you got two resources. You play this, play CNC, 
you're singing singing for seven. That's a that's a hefty block on its own. That's a a lot of Ira is three probably block, taught. Right? Yeah, three yeah. card block. A lot of Ira has taught us that that is not a nice thing to want to block, but you have to block it. Um, it gives and then it gives the CNC go again, which is something that just seems crazy to most people. Um, and if it, if the attack hits, you got to look at the top of your gear, deck and yeah. banish it. If you, you don't want. even have to you banish. You don't have to banish. You just, it just gives you more gas. Yeah. <laughs> like oh, I can play. Oh, it has go again. I drew this other attack. Let's say it's bounding demigon. And I'm just gonna come back in for four again. Like this card is nuts. Mm, not only that, you get to look at the top card of your deck and go, this actually might be better in hand next turn. Yeah, yeah. You so you play this. Uh, CNC another attack action give it go again with chain then come in with the galaxy black this is going to enable those massive aggressive turns yeah it's just can't just I, yeah, cards yeah. Just, I'm, this cards is going to be a card that I'm going to love or I'm going to hate or love to hate yeah. it's just it's amazing I'm looking forward to it either way <laughs> alright so moving on from shadow puppetry we have got soul reaping so soul reaping is a shadow action attack uh, it is red with a cost of 6. Its attack is 6 and it blocks for 3. And its effect reads uh, Legendary Chain Specialization. You may only have one Soul Reaping in your deck and only if your hero is chained. You may banish one or more cards from your hand rather than play rather than pay Soul Reaping's cost. If you do, gain one resource for each card with Blood Debt banished this way. While Soul Reaping is attacking a hero with one or more cards in their soul, it has go again. So, this card might as well not have a cost. You're never going to pay six for this. You're never paying six for this, but the point is, uh, so what sounds weird is, um, say you banish two blues, you're only getting two resources. Yeah, but you want to you want to banish one card, probably. Yes, there's probably something in your hand that you want to banish that you know you're going to play yeah. The banished pile later, or you need yeah. to have banished. Maybe you have a bunch of good cards in your hand yeah. that get buffs from being in the banish zone, so you buff multiple of those, and then you have the resource to play them. Yeah. Um, and it has, um, it has go again up against um, um, enemy is? characters with cards in their soul. So extra hate effect, but hey, if you don't have that, you just use chain's ability. That that effect just solves so much. Come in for six banish cards, have more resource. Block three. Can't go wrong. Card just does everything. It's so aggressive. I love it. The artwork for it is amazing. That chain, broken yeah. sword and thing. See, is Ursa in the in the background. Reminds me him. of um, from Bleach. Oh really? Yeah. Um, I can't remember. Is it Rinji Abrai or something like that? He's got a sword that breaks into secrets. Oh, I know that guy. Yeah, out. yeah, yeah. He cuts cuts those people's shoulders and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah, really cool looking weapon. Just how do you defend against that? Hey. <laughs> Yeah, totally agree with you guys on the artwork. This is definitely my favourite artwork from the set that I've seen <laughs> yeah, so far. It's just yeah. really cool. Yeah. But anyway, moving on to our last of the shadow cards, uh, we have got Ghostly Visit. So Ghostly Visit is a shadow action attack. Um, I believe it comes in red, blue, and yellow, and has a cost of one. It has an attack of four and blocks for three. The effect reads: You may play Ghostly Visit from your banished zone. Blood debt. Yeah. yeah. So um, this is a card I wanted to include in this list, just because um, I think it's a really great example of just cards that pay off from the Spanish shenanigans. Yeah. Just an attack for four costs one. It's not flashy, um, but it's going to hurt your opponent. Yeah. And you know you want to push through damage. One for four is a pretty decent rate. And if you can play this, banish it, play it again, or just banish it, play it. It's pretty good value. Yeah. It's just cost one snatch without the draw. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, I mean, you can do a lot worse, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. Alright, so we're moving on to the Light Warrior type uh, cards here now. So starting us off, we have got Sir Bolton, Breaker of Dawn. And it reads, oh, it's a Light Warrior hero. It's got an intellect of four. Um, it's got 40 health for the uh, grown-up hero and 20 for the young hero. And its effect reads, if you've charged this turn, attacks you control have plus one attack while defended by an attack action card. Attack reaction, banish a card from Sir Bolton's soul. Target attack with attack greater than its base attack gains go again. 
So it's not explained here, but the ability of charge, which is the keyword there, is actually putting a card underneath your hero, which is putting from, a from card your hand. from yeah. your hand, which is putting a card into your soul. Yeah, um, light warrior hero, huh? Who, who saw that coming? <laughs> who saw that coming? I swear, I called warrior you called ages it? ago. A lot of people didn't think it was going to happen. Yeah, a lot of people were highly against it. Because, yeah, I you saw know, some saw some warrior hate in a few chats, you know, which is crazy. Which yeah. is crazy. Dorin- I love warrior. Dorinthia has been getting a lot of people lot of skin time. a little bit. I think. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, this this card this is really great. exciting. This card punishes you if you block with an attack action. For someone like Kane, who's got multiple attack actions, yeah. or even Olivia with multiple attack actions, yeah. you got to be careful about what you're defending with because interesting. you're going to give your card a buff. Yeah, interestingly, Dorinthia is full of non-attack actions. So this yeah. character is actually going to struggle a little bit in that matchup, I think. Just yeah. because you're not going to get that ability to trigger yeah but boy this this card is so much reaction. going on right like plus one the attack reaction banish a card to increase your attack from the soul um and giving it go again a lot of the attack action cards that we've seen so far for him um actually charge as a play cost yeah so a choice so they'll cost. actually kind of give themselves go again in a way yeah. they just pay for it and then they just wait on you to make a mistake and block it yeah. or you know so, we increase it with a raise reflex or something. Yeah. Another thing that we've seen with uh, hero powers, um, some of the most powerful effects is a part missing from them, is this one just says attack reaction, not once per turn attack reaction. Yeah, so this so, means multiple times you can do yeah, this. Yeah, and we've seen this, um, some of the most powerful things heroes can do with Reinar's multiple intimidates per turn, or um, Bravo pitching his whole hand away if he doesn't like it with uh, replaying as dominate over and over this card you can set up and have a massive turn you give every attack go again you just go all out yeah um and we've seen there are some really big attacks to go with him so really exciting hero we'll move on to some of his I cards i look forward to playing him yeah he's gonna be yeah all right so moving on from sir bolton uh we have got lumina ascension so lumina ascension is a majestic light warrior action card it's yellow with a cost of zero, and it reads, Bolton Specialization, you may only have Lumina Ascension in your deck if your hero is Bolton. Until the end of turn, weapons you control gain plus one attack, and if this hits, reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a light card, put it into your hero's soul and gain one health. Otherwise, put it on the bottom of your deck. If you've charged this turn, you may attack an additional time with each weapon you control. Go again. Wow. All right. So there are a lot of words here. Yeah. There are a lot of words here. There is a lot going on here. Um, this card rewards two weapons turns, as well. Yeah, it rewards your weapons. Uh, it rewards you from having two weapons, whether it be sabers or the axes or the hatchets. Mm-hmm. Um, it also turns your hero's ability on straight away. Because um, mm. if you read, uh, the base attack is what is needed. Yeah, yeah. For the attack reaction. Yeah, you don't you don't have to do anything else, and yeah, just gaining gaining life block. like, um, is super massive. And uh, one thing I want to note quickly is we're seeing a lot more of car- more cards that do things um, regarding the top card of your deck. So I think yeah. opting or cards that provide opting as a bonus are going to be more powerful going forwards. I.e. Tyler's Medic Lens will be very helpful. Yeah. I of the Vividian may also see more play. Yeah, yeah, because you just get to set up these cards a lot better and make your deck a bit more consistent. What also means you can cycle out cards and put them on the bottom of your deck if you're not interested. Yeah, in. um, and obviously this really encourages you to play a bunch of light cards on your deck. Yes. Cool, should we jump on? Yeah. All right, so moving on from Lumina Ascension, we've got Beacon of Victory. So Beacon of Victory is a majestic light warrior attack reaction it blocks for three and it's yellow and its effect reads as an additional cost to play beacon of victory banish x cards from your hero's soul x can't be zero target attack gains plus x attack if you've charged this turn search your deck for an action card with cost x or less reveal it put it into your hand then shuffle your deck Uh, so this card here straight away rewards you from charging over the course of a game. This is a card you probably want to see late game after you've done multiple charges and you've got heaps mm. of cards sitting there because then it gives you free range to increase an attack and pick a card of your yeah. choice to play. 
Um, so yes, it's a it's an attack reaction, and yes. it, it can, like you know, if this is the end of the game and you have say maybe six or seven cards in your soul, or you know you've really been setting them up, you can really fly overpower the cost zero yeah. you know kind of territory so, yeah if you haven't if your card that you're attacking with isn't turned on already by your hero's ability this will turn it on and allow yeah. you to attack react again yeah. and give it go again which then allows you to search get the card out of your deck and actually play that as well yeah so presumably you're going to attack with a card that's going to charge then you're going to play this you're going to banish most of your charge of, yeah, of your soul cards most of them. Um, and you're going to leave one so that you can give the attack go again, and then you're going to come in with the second attack that you search, yeah. and it's just going to be a massive blowout. Like this this card is just nuts. Yeah, this like, is like, really, it's definitely a beacon for victory. Yeah, yeah, like, this is going to kill you. Just, I can see yeah, the ceiling so many is, times. It's probably too late. Yeah, yeah, That's exactly. Why. This, this card is really cool. Yeah. All right, so moving on from beacon of victory, we have got Bolting Blade. So Bolting Blade is also a Magista. It's a light warrior action attack. It's got seven attack, three defense, and its cost is four. It's yellow. Its effect reads, Bolting Blade costs two less to play for each time you have charged this turn. So this is um, kind of going to be for one of your going off turns. So um, yes, so you want to charge cards, but you also need to get, give yourself go again to... Um, get to the point where you've charged twice. So you're going to attack twice with cards that charge you, and then you're going to come in for seven. It's just going to be nuts, right? Honestly, no. this is probably one of the cards I'm searching for with the last card. Yeah, exactly. I'm right. pre-planning to leave yeah, two true. or three in there, and then I'm going for this card so I can play this card for nothing. Yeah, it's just nuts. We know how good yeah. E-Strike is, and this is potentially E-Strike that doesn't put a card on the bottom of your deck. Exactly. Which... Uh, could be it's bad, lot, could be good. It's a lot like another card that we'll see shortly. Yeah. So, yeah, really awesome card. Really sweet effect. Mm -mm, good artwork, too. Yeah. Can't wait to see it in foil. This set is just stunning in general. It consists... Have, the art is just consistently amazing. Yeah. Alrighty, so moving on from Bolting Blade, we have now got Courageous Steel Hand. And Courageous Steel Hand is a common. It's blocks for two and... A light warrior attack reaction. I believe this is in red, blue, and yellow. Yeah. And its effect reads: If you've charged this turn, target attack gains plus three attack. So, this is a lunging press on uh, on steroids if you've charged. Um, well, I think the, the apt comparison is Einzel response, right? How um, many how many people have been given PTSD is, by that card? Yes, but problem is, is Einzel response is only on weapon. You yeah. can put this on weapon or an attack action. Yeah, um, exactly. And it's not specific to the thing. So that's why I compared it to Lunging Press. Well, lung, Lunging Press, press is, is only lung, attacks. Yeah, yeah, Lunging Press is only attack actions. So, I mean, yeah, this yeah. is kind of in a league of its own. It is yeah. actually the... Um, if you can get a charge, it's the best effect of its kind. Yeah. You know, it's three attack for nothing can just get you over. Just really just nuts. And... As we're going to see with some of the attack actions coming up, some of them really reward you actually hitting your opponent. You get to draw or put them into your soul. It's just this card is going to be strong. It's going to be a three of a uh, red version at least in every single. Uh, it also turns your hero alive as well. Yeah, yeah. With both the plus one and the go again. Yeah, this card is super synergistic. It's just. Yeah. This is warrior. This, this is, is what warrior. people play warrior for. Zero cost plus three. Ha ha ha. You know, get around this. <laughs> Alright, so moving on from Courageous Steel Hand, we have got Bolt of Courage. Bolt of Courage is a common light warrior action attack. It attacks for three, blocks for three. Um, has zero cost, and I believe it comes in blue, red, and yellow. Its effect reads, as an additional cost to play Bolt of Courage, you may charge your hero's soul. Put a card from your hand face up under your hero. If you've charged this turn, Bolt of Courage gains. If this hits, draw a card. All right. So this is a card you want to steal, Hand. <laughs> yes. Uh, so the, other, the funny thing about this is, is you don't actually have to charge. It's zero cost, but it's a choice to charge or yeah. not. Uh, you do get rewarded more for charging if you know the card is going to hit, which is draw a card. Um, mm. I believe there's another one like this that just came out that has actually just been revealed at the point of recording this. It does the same thing, but instead it... Um, 
for hits it goes into your soul mm. so when i first saw this card my immediate reaction was this card's bad and it's because i looked at the stats and i saw zero for three and i was like this is just going to get blocked by one card it's not going to do anything yeah um but that's not quite the case because um bolton's ability if it's an attack um they block with an attack action it becomes basically a builder snatch right yeah. it becomes a four attack which requires two cards to block or if you have an attack reaction it's just going to get over anyway and then you can give it go again so in a lot of cases this card's better than snatch um so this card's not bad it's really good um and really scary to play against i think if someone plays this this is gonna be a scary card to Um, see but also a really skillful card to play against if you call this card and just block with one card and you get it correct with your non-attack action block then that's going to put you far ahead in that game sink below is going to see a lot of play yeah, I mean, Sink Below is not going to get worse with time, is it? Yeah, Sink Below Faith was saying not <laughs> getting worse more cards in the game to block. I guess you I'll play that and your opponent goes, ah. Oh. Yeah. Interestingly, Silverhand doesn't care about reprise. Doesn't. So you can you can sink from Arsenal all you like, but Silverhand's going to go, nah. Yeah. Three over, two over gotta the top. Got to have it, though. Got to have it. Yeah. you got to have it. You know, Sink Steel Blade in the stack. Mm. Alrighty. Uh, moving on from Bolt of Courage, we've got V of the Vanguard. So V of the Vanguard is a rear light warrior action attack. Its attack is three, it blocks for three, it's yellow and costs one. Its effect reads, Bolton specialization. You may only have V of the Vanguard in your deck if your hero is Bolton. As an additional cost to play V of the Vanguard, you may charge your hero's soul any number of times. Attacks you control on this combat chain gain plus one attack for each light card charged this way. Yeah, so there's um, a really interesting story behind this card. James White actually released an article on this, and um, I encourage you all to read it yourself, but he basically recounts his, some stories from his childhood about medieval warfare, how they'd um, attack in a V-shaped formation, and James thinks that the person at the very tip of this V-formation is the bravest person. So... This is Bolt. Bolton kind of signifies that in this card game. He is the V of the Vanguard, the very tip, the most brave person. So this card has a really cool story behind it, and it's pretty good too. Yeah, it's uh, not a bad effect. It, I mean, this is a card you definitely want to probably play from Arsenal, have a blue yeah. in hand, pitch, put yeah. three cards in your, into your hero, or, or yeah. put two cards into your hero, get the, the charge ability off. Um... Yeah. yeah, yeah. so this is like going to be one of your setup turns where you try to put a lot of cards uh, in your soul at once. And yeah, I'm, you've got to say, this this Bolton hero really reminds me of Dash a lot, actually. He's going to be this kind of mid-rangey deck that is interacting kind of, not that, maybe a bit more than Dash, but it's going to set up this big kind of endgame where it's just going to put through a load of damage. You just can't stop. There's too many cards, too many go again, you know? And it's just going to put you down. Yeah. So I think this is a deck that you kind of have to mess with early to stop them building up their soul. Because yeah. if they're able to stick a bunch of cards in there, the these effects only get stronger. They only get better. Yep. Yeah. These these kind of charging up your soul is kind of like charging up an induction chamber. It's kind of yeah. where I'm going with this. Um, so yeah, really cool effect to see in the game. All right, so... All right, so moving on to the last card from the warrior thing it was revealed literally with i believe within the last hour um which yeah, got, is, got the message <laughs> yeah which is engulfing light thanks to our friends at flesh and blood italy for revealing this one and it says it is a common light warrior action attack we can assume that this will probably be a red yellow and blue yep. card um the red variant has three attack blocks for three and it's cost of zero and its effect reads as an additional cost to play Engulfing Light, you may charge your hero's soul. If you've charged this turn, Engulfing Light gains if this hits, put it into your hero's soul. Alright, so this is the card I was talking about before that was similar to the, the other one, whereas yeah. um, if the card hits, it draws a card, the, the Snatch one. Yeah. Whereas this is the one that goes into your soul. Mm. Um Probably less great of effect, but this is more of an effect I, that you want I actually to... think it might I don't be think slightly it's bad. better. 
because um, of course if you draw the card you can arsenal it but, but charging this, your soul for later game is yeah, a I lot think, more I beneficial think, I think you want to get your soul as big as possible as soon as possible this is more for a yeah, bigger turn than it is for a go wide turn yeah. whereas the snatch one's probably more for a go wide turn yeah and I think this card puts a lot of pressure on your opponent to try and block it yeah um, so this card is going to be a frequent target of attack reactions and again with the three attack it can get buffed if they block with the attack action. So it can be four sometimes. So yeah, again, really similar to the other card, just as good, I think, if not better. Yeah. Alrighty, so moving on to the light, like generically light ones, mm -hmm. we have got Celestial Cataclysm. So Celestial Cataclysm is a majestic light action card. It's effect... Oh, it's got, it attacks for 7, it blocks for 3, and it is a yellow cost 0 card. Its effect reads, as an additional cost to play Celestial Cataclysm, banish 3 cards from your hero's soul. It has go again, and it's got a little bit of text here that just reads, Legions grow larger and bolder from one generation <laughs> to the next. What began as a brave warrior with a spear becomes a deity of virtue, raining down thunder upon tyrants. Quote, Prism. Wow. Yeah. All right, so on the on the first day of spoilers, just before they released anything, they released an art preview thing. With this, and yeah. if you like, opened the article and you scrolled all the way down, this it's, was right. This at surely the caught your eye. It looks stunning. It is beautiful. It is like the upgraded E Strike of yeah. this set. Um, also, we also learned that this is uh, one of the pre-release mats. Really? Um, video oh. um, from Team Covenant's uh, video. You'll and be the other that, one Nick. is Eclipse. But this is wow. this is a beautiful map. Yeah, I and can as, imagine. As an avid map collector, this is on yeah. my to-get list. There's a bit of speculation on my head, but I think they're the, the designing Shadow and they came up with Shadow Puppetry. And someone looked at that and said, oh, why, why don't we give Light something just as good? And they were like, yeah. they were like you know what? East strike 2.0. East strike 2.0. Uh, so this one has... Banish three cards from your soul, seven attack, go again. This is the two modes from E-Strike on a single card without the downside, yep. putting a card to the bottom. This card's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. And it's not hard. To, we've seen from the other cards, it's not hard to charge your yeah, soul. It's, it's not going to be a difficult. Game, a card that you don't want to see like really early game, but it's a card you want to see mid-game. Yeah. It's going to be really good to be in the mid-game. Just because it's going to be a card that can rest you back tempo if you ever lose it. Yes. Just being able to come in for seven. If you set this up in your arsenal, block out a couple turns, but you have two cards, seven, something else, just yeah, you're going to force them to block. It's a lot of damage. Yeah. All right. All right, so moving on from Celestial Cataclysm, we've got Tome of Divinity. Tome of Divinity is, again, a majestic card. It's a light instant that is yellow and has a cost of four. Uh, the effect reads, draw two cards. If a card has been put into your hero's soul this turn, instead, draw three cards. And it reads, knowledge bows before nothing except existence itself. Quote, <laughs> Grand Magister the Radiant. Do you right. like to draw cards? I like, I like to, to draw, draw cards. <laughs> We all love to draw cards. But, oh, wow. It's, it's a big cost. It is a big cost. It is a very big cost. Four resources, two cards. This is a card, like, as, like, Tom of Indel, this is a card that you probably get off leaving a turn at Arsenal and mm. uh, waiting out a resource hand and, um... Yeah, and, and you don't need a time snap for this card. This card don't. is instant. You can draw the cards and keep going. Yep. Um, part of that is, I think, balanced by its higher cost. Um, yes. Four, but... Yeah, I think... Well, it's, it's uh, one blue and a tunic, and, uh, yeah. you know, if you've got the card in your soul, it's three cards. Mm. To uh, me, I this could just be me, but I kind of think this wouldn't be a card you would run in Bolton. just doesn't really grab me. It doesn't. Uh, as doing the kind of thing you want to in that deck, I think maybe this is a nod towards the other hero that we'll see later this week. Yeah. Looking forward to that. Yeah, um, I think it's going to be really cool. If there's a deck that'll let me draw three cards, I'll probably give it a go. <laughs> I, I definitely will. I mean, who doesn't like having an extra six cards to mess around yeah, with? Yeah, exactly, you know? right. Yeah, 100%. All right, so moving on to Ray of Hope. Um, Ray of Hope is a common light instant. Um, the version we've got here is yellow, but I believe it may be a red, yellow, and blue. Not a red, yellow, and blue. I'm not sure. 
Not sure. I don't think so. Yeah, well, we have to confirm that. But um, yeah, yeah, this copy no, we've got is not. yellow definitely... with a cost of one. Mm. And it reads, attacks you control have plus one while attacking a shadow hero this turn. If you have less health than an opposing shadow hero, put Ray of Hope into your hero's soul. So I'm in firm belief this is just one color, as is the, the increase in the attack is only one on yellow. A blue would be a zero increase with just putting it into your hero's yeah, soul. Yeah, for knowing. yeah I it think it's probably like, just a yellow yeah. as well. But yeah, when Monarch so this, first came out, people were thinking you could run light or shadow cards in any of the heroes. And as soon as this card got spoiled, I was kind of like, yeah, probably not. Yep. There's no way you'd, allowed, you'd be allowed to play this card in Ninja. It's just yeah. not fair. <laughs> it's really not. Um, but wow, what a card for Bolton, right? This was the main artwork for two for Flesh, uh, for the Monarch. Yeah, this is one half. Uh, I can't remember the Shadow Anthem. Do, do, uh, we Eclipse there? Existence. Yeah, Eclipse we haven't Existence. gone through it, but it's kind of an equal like hate yeah. card. So this but, is the Cold Fall promo for any other, anyone attending the pre-release. It's a yeah, it's a very nice card that's probably going to look very good Cold Foil. It's uh, going to look really really cool. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. But yeah. If you're playing as a shadow hero, plus one to two or three of your balls and attacks is... And this is definitely a sideboard card for that yeah. sort of matchup. And if, yeah, if you're playing, um, you know, against Chain, you're probably going to have lower life because they're going to be really aggressive. Yeah. So you can probably pretty safely get the get it into your hero's soul as well. Yeah. All right, so moving on to Seek Enlightenment. Seek Enlightenment is a common light action that blocks for two. It has a cost of one, and it reads, The next attack action card you play this turn gains plus three, and if this hits, put it into your hero's soul, and go again. So one of the main things that jumped out at me at this card is it doesn't say uh, the next light attack action or next warrior attack action. It just says next attack action. So you can you can E-strike with this and this card into your soul if it hits this card is great and it reminds me a lot of uh, nature's path pilgrimage where it's kind of a card that makes your opponent want to block um and of course then then you can go over with your attack reactions um and even on some of those three attack cards it's going to be a triple card block if even one of those cards uh, one of the two cards that they would originally block with has to be an attack action yeah so yeah this card is just going to be really good at forcing people to block or just getting you ahead in soul and um, damage on the board. Um, this really is good. also a card that comes in red, blue, or yellow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I think mostly the red will see play just because of the the two block. Um, yep. Usually, you don't see those so, two blocks so much in the yellow and blue. And you don't usually see plus ones being played unless you're playing Iron Song Response. Yeah, because it's just, usually used for resource. Yeah. It's just not not effective for swap, just a plus swap, one. Swapping one card for just one equipment piece is usually not quite what you want. Yeah. And especially in a, a deck that wants to regain tempo at some point is not ideal. Yeah. So but the red is really strong. Yeah. Alrighty, so moving on to our last uh, light generic card that we will be discussing today. Um, and that is Illuminate. Illuminate is a common light action attack. It, uh, the red variant attacks for four and blocks for three and has a cost of zero. This does come in red, blue and yellow and its effect reads, if Illuminate hits, put it into your hero's soul. And yeah, it says, uh, sometimes a hands-on lesson is the best approach. Instructor Merlin Rivera. So when I originally saw this artwork, so this artwork was on the, the article as well, I was like, well, once I saw the the ally tokens, I was like, I hope this is yeah. is our light ally token. I thought it was maybe a cleric hero. Yeah, a little disappointed that it's not, but the artwork is the, art, the artwork is awesome. But amazing! Hey, it's on a really good card too. It's a really good card. Mm-hmm. It's a it's basically a snatch or a scarf a scarf without go again, but with an effect that is very very good for our Bolton. Yeah. So yeah, while Bolton can give it go again, it blocks three, which is better than snatch. Yeah. Um, and if it hits, put into your hero's hole. And so you can just block with three cards, play this for four. You know, this is this is just going to be the bee's knees. Yeah. It's awesome. This is going to be a card that sees a lot of play in red, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Really, really good card. All right, so moving on to our last section for the day, which is generic cards that we are choosing to uh, discuss. And our first one is Memorial Ground. So Memorial Ground is a common generic instant. Um, it reads, 
put target attack action card with cost two or less from your graveyard on top of your deck. Um, the copy we've got here is red with a cost of zero. And yeah. So it does come in other, other cost cards. You know, yellow is one and blue is zero. Um, but I think the red is probably where it's at, really, because it covers all our grounds. Well, the yellow and blue versions are quite good for low to the ground. Yeah, a lot of the ground oh, decks that just go wine, so e.g. Um, I um, Ninja, for example, yeah, yeah. or light blue more than yeah. this. The... But this here, this here, who, who doesn't like putting CNC back on top of their deck yeah, after yeah. playing it for their next turn to make your opponent hate you more? Yeah, I mean, the flavor text for this card is Memories fade, but their names remain. And whose name is on everyone's tongues but is Alio when it comes to this card? This card yeah. gives a, a lot of options for your dominated arrow attacks. So yeah. definitely a shoo-in. You know, blue, put red in the ledger on top, dominate it, come in for five. It's just oh, yeah. pretty spicy. Red, red in the ledger is already in your arsenal. You play it, play this, put it back on top of your deck. Yeah. Put it back in your it's arsenal. Pretty sweet. Yeah, definitely. Just, yeah, really good card for that deck. I think it's going to see heaps of play there. All right, so moving on to Frontline Scout. So Frontline Scout is a common generic action attack. It comes in red, blue, and yellow, and it has a cost of zero. The red has an attack of three and blocks for two, and the effect reads, you may look at the defending hero's hand. If Frontline Scout is played from Arsenal, it gains go again. Wow, what a card. So she is watching a horror happen before her. So this uh, shadow that's behind her is actually an image that's happening in front of her and the light's just shadowing what's happening. And she is like, uh, I did not want to be here. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you might not want to know what's in your opponent's hand, right? Yes. Sometimes it could be um, forbidden knowledge. Um, but yeah, this card has a lot of wow factor to it. Yes. Um, um, it's effect, looking at your opponent's hand. This is the first off. This is the first off looking at your opponent's hand. Um, this could be good for a wizard player looking into an opponent's hand Wanting to do a big turn and yeah, seeing true. what the resource they have. True, and um, a lot of people were immediately talking about its application against a warrior. Yes, is... uh, being able to see if your opponent is going to be bluffing yeah. a lot of uh, attack reactions or not next mm. turn. Um, the... Sadly, it only swings for three. I feel and like this would be a two. lot better card if it swung for four. It yeah. would be force I mean, blocked. The, right? down, the downside of the card is that it has poor stats and it has conditional go again and... In a lot of decks that run these low to the ground cards, they have a number of cards competing for their arsenal already, with uh, Plunder Run being a big one. Yeah. Um, so this card, I think, is a bit difficult to commit to for some decks, but I'm sure if there are any decks that have obnoxious enough hands, um, this might see play to try and skirt around them. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. So moving on, we have got... Um, be little. So, yeah, this is uh, this was revealed today. It is a generic action attack. With um, we don't really know if it's got uh, red, yellow, and blue yet, but I think it's probably a safe assumption to say that there will probably be red, yellow, and blue variants of this one. Yep. yep. Um, it attack the red variant attacks for three and blocks for two, um, and it has a cost of one. As its effect reads. As an additional cost to play Belittle, you may reveal an attack action card with three or less base attack from your hand. If you do, search your deck for a card named um, Minnowism, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck, and go again. I want my light dwarf. You want a light dwarf? I want a light dwarf. This is what, this is what the community is demanding. LEC Studio. I mean... Rudy's reveal, better be. Better be. Better be a dwarf a, a light hero. dwarf hero. Look. Or, or riots are happening. I've got to say, this, this guy is, you know, fantastic facial hair. You know, he looks proud, you know. Yeah. Could he be a light guardian? He could Who be. Who knows? It's just a big X he's got there. Unfortunately, he's on a generic card, so yeah. it seems less likely. But, in hindsight, it's just amazing artwork on a card that doesn't have too bad of an effect, like, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, we're going to have a look at Minoism in a second, but um, one for three feature card is not the worst. No, um, and it has go again, so you know you're probably playing 
the three cost card that uh, yeah, the three yeah. attacking card that's in your hand anyway. Yeah, I think that's the main restriction, right? Is you maybe want to be playing, maybe see this in play with Benji, mm. which is playing lower cost attacks anyway, so you have the reveal. Um, that way you can reveal it, attack with this, get some card advantage, and just push your advantage. Yep. Alrighty, so moving on to the last generic card we will be discussing today, and the last card we will be discussing in general today, and that is Minnowism. So Minnowism is a generic action common that blocks for two, and it has zero cost. Its effect reads, the next attack action card with three or less base attack, you play this turn gains plus three. Go again, and it reads, be careful who you talk down to. <laughs> Wow. I've just seen a lot of things it on the just, community page and it, uh, it reminisces of what some of those things have been said. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, this uh, card instantly plays off the other one, yeah, which is really good. Uh, it, the other card fetches you a nimbleism, basically. It's kind of what this is. Yeah. Um, so nimbleism is one cost or less, but this one is three attack or less. Um You've already revealed that you've got a free attack or less card in your yeah, hand. Yeah, so you've you already have got something to play again. it in. Yeah, this card is just... It's going to be really good. It's like almost like fetching like a kind of hit and run in Benji decks. Yeah. So, yeah, I see this being really good in Blitz. Yeah. Just puts a lot of pressure on your opponent to um, start thinking about their life total. Yeah. Be careful who you talk down to. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. All right, so that'll be uh, that'll be us for today. Thank you to uh, Dan and Nick for being Thank here for this for, uh, for this great. video, and yeah. uh, I think yeah. you've been really invaluable to the to the to the channel. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, hopefully, you guys have made it through to the end. Um, lots of talking, but yeah, we've had a really good time. We want to thank Greg for letting us come in here and and film this video for you guys. Yeah, and um, if you guys are available, I'm sure we can do another one before the uh, all the all the spoilers are all finished. Yeah, so. yeah I believe uh, end of this week is probably end of the spoiler season, which means we have a week of downturn. I mean, we have uh, one more hero to go through. Yeah, yeah, at the end of there. this week. So, you know, we'll probably do another one on that hero and uh, an accumulation of the whole spoiler season. So if that sounds interesting to you guys, make sure to like and subscribe for more content. Stay tuned. Feel and free to drop a comment. Yeah. And, yeah. and make sure to subscribe. <laughs> Alrighty, thank you very much. Thank you. See ya.